Yes, 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 yes. Holy moly, we were gonna get up to some trouble there. Again, welcome back, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch Hello Good Game. Today we'll be playing with a Bant aggro deck I call the Spirit World. It revolves around Clarion Spirit and Toski. Instead of using red, though, within the Naya version, we'll be swinging out that red for the blue. And that's going to give us access to Bega the Watcher, similarly to the Edgewall Innkeeper, allowing us to draw on everything that we cast uh, that's not in our hand, aka Adventure Cards in Exile. So a lot of fun to be had within the deck. We have a 75% win rate in Mythic, climbing up through the top 200 quite successfully. Um, you know, just having a lot of fun with the deck. If you guys find any value within today's video, just go ahead, give it a thumbs up. You know, I know that's a lot to ask, but I'm sure you can take a second now while I'm rambling on about it to go ahead and accomplish that goal of yours. Give that thumbs up. Thank you guys so much, uh, you know, for entertaining me within this. Let's get into the deck and hopefully I can provide enough value uh, to make it worth your while. Of course, if you're into any free contests and giveaways, uh, competitions, all of those will be available to you within my link tree. Uh, everything from the 500,000 gem giveaway, brawl and artisan cash prize, free entry tournaments, uh, the free coaching sessions, there's so much going on uh, that you can get involved with uh, within the link tree link in the description below, or you can Google Hello Good Game Link Tree to get in on that. So. With that out of the way, 60 cards, best of one, 2.3 average mana within the deck. Two non-creatures with 34 creatures. Right there, uh, we get a clear indication that this is going to be an aggro-based deck where we go wide with creatures. We have 24 lands in the deck to uh, complement the 2.3 average. And when we look at the split of mana, we can see that it is basically a Selesnia white and green deck with a splash of blue within it and again that's going to give us access to vega the watcher along with brazen borrower one of the most powerful adventure cards within the game starting the deck out we've got four copies of giant killer this is a one two in which we can pay two plus tap it to tap another target creature this is great because we can do this on our opponent's end step and our uh, main phase to tap two of their creatures uh, which will allow us to get those attacks in we can keep a big baddie of theirs maybe something with lifelink from attacking us uh, so we can keep their health points uh, on the down and out with this being said we also have chalk down for three mana at instant speed as the adventure attached to the giant killer destroy target creature with power four or greater this takes care of any of those big baddies something like an elder gargaroth in which it has reach, shuts down our flyers, and has the uh, life gain uh, effect to it. So um, a good answer for that. And there's many more creatures that you can easily take out with the Giant Killer. Moving on, we've got the Edgewall Innkeeper, four copies of this in deck, 1-1. One, one. And whenever you cast a creature spell that has adventure, draw a card. The whole deck has cards with adventure, much like the Giant Killer, which we just take a look at, or just have taken a look at. Um, so again, this is going to be a draw engine within the deck force. It also helps us go wide. It's also a low CMC creature in which we can double draw, which we'll talk about in a second. With four copies of Jesperia Sentinel, a 1-2 with reach, and you can tap it to tap an untapped creature we control, adding one mana of any color. And now that's going to be a key component uh, to this deck as well when we look at something like the Clarion Spirit, one of the engines within the build for our tokens. A 2 CMC 2-2, two, two, and whenever you cast your second spell each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. This is exceptionally good because we can turn 1 the sentinel, turn 2 the spirit, tap the spirit with the sentinel, and then play a 1 CMC spell on top of the spirit, thereby triggering the second spell each turn effect, creating a 1-1 one, one flyer. So on turn 2, we can have 4 creatures. Absolutely lovely. Two copies of Shepherd of the Flock, a 3-1. Usher to safety for one mana at instant speed as the adventure. Return target permanent, you control to its owner's hand. This is great to get extra value from our adventure cards. We can use the adventure, play the creature, get the draws from the innkeeper, from Vega, bounce it back to our hand, reuse the adventure, uh, and then play that creature for uh, that draw again as well. So there's a lot of 
nice things that you can do with Shepherd of the Flaw. Uh, never mind protecting yourself from your opponent's removal. You can protect your spirit. You can protect Vega with it. Now we're into our three drops. We'll start with Vega the Watcher. 2-2 two, two with flying, and whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you draw a card. Whenever we cast a adventure spell, the creature goes into exile, and that will be like casting it later on from somewhere other than our hand. That's great. Four copies of the Lovestruck Beast, 5-5, five, five, can only attack if we control a 1-1. One, one. We've got plenty of those in the deck. The Clarion Spirit creates 1-1s. One, the Edge Wall Innkeeper is a 1-1, one, one, and we have Toski as well. That we'll talk about in a second, also being of one power and toughness. Heart's Desire, at sorcery speed, as the adventure attached to Lovestruck Beast, to create a 1-1 white human creature token, uh, hereby again allowing it to attack within itself. Four copies of the Brazen Borrower, a 3-1 that can only block other creatures with flying, aka rogues. Petty Theft for 2 at instant speed as the adventure, to return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Uh, you know, that's going to be a really nice tempo play for us. Two copies of the Skyclave Apparition for 2-2, uh, and when it enters battlefield, exile target non-land, non-token permanent that our opponent controls with converted mana cost 4 or less. When it leaves the battlefield, Exile's card's owner will create a XX Blue Illusion creature token uh, equal to that card's converted mana that we exile. Into our four drops now, two copies of Felidar Retreat and Enchantments with Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, choose one. Either create a 2-2 White Cat Beast creature token or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control and they gain Vigilance until the end of turn. Three copies of Toski, Bear of Secrets, a 1-1 with Indestructible, cannot be countered, and whenever it, uh, sorry, it attacks each combat if able, and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Uh, that's going to be really nice for us as well, because we're going so wide with those tokens. Plenty of land in the deck. The passages are here to key on top of the landfall ability within the retreat. Our general strategy in synergy is to outvalue our opponent in all aspects. We do this through the draw of the Innkeeper and Vega. We do it through the creature production of Clarion Spirit. And of course, we make all of those creatures stronger through our Felidar Retreat and then draw also with Toski. We have removal within Chop Down of the Giant Killer and our Skyclave Apparition. Tempo bounces within Borrower on our opponent's side and protection from our opponent's removal within Usher to Safety. Ramp within the Sentinel. Big Balker within Lovestruck Beast, of course, right? So it's a really simple deck. It doesn't look like a lot, but when you start to apply all of these layers of value uh, on top of one another, uh, they're going to really perform quite successfully for you. So that's the deck list. And uh, again, you know, try to get that Innkeeper out, try to get Vega out, and then, you know, also have the Spirit out in play. Those are your three highest priority drops. Uh, fourth highest priority being the Felidar Retreat. And then you're just playing adventure spells. Adventure, 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 uh, with kind of those as the cornerstones to your adventure base. Thanks again for your time and attention. Don't forget to check out our Linktree link, whether you're trying to support me financially or take part in all of our free uh, community events. Uh, you can find that within the description below or Google Hello Good Game Linktree to find it. I really recommend you download the Arena Assistant for free if you're on Windows, uh, if you are just starting out as well. You can find that right there. Thanks again for watching, guys. I know you're going to enjoy the deck. I know I did, and we'll see you soon in the next video. Or, uh, no, 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 with our final thoughts. <laughs> We're not wrapping up yet. we got to do the gameplay and then the final thoughts. It's been a long day. Our opponent plays first. I like the Sentinel opening hand. We get more land. Where's the spirit? The Holy Spirit's within you! Oh, um, yeah, we have to not show that on stream while we're recording. Hello. Da -da 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 Let's go wide, we'll bounce it later. We'll bounce it later. Crystalline giant in the house. Vigilance, hot dog.
we could top deck Toski. That's cool. If not, we can just Skyclave. I think we still have to take the Aspirin over the Giant. Oh, and it gets Hexproof, so, yup. But if we can get Faggot in play, it's gonna be really good for us. Okay. First strike, are you kidding me? We'll take the damage. It did lose Vigilance at least. Here's the spirit, this is good. If they have something, I'm gonna die. Right, I should just force them to block, we go around, right? Cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Axos is good. Menace. No attack stuff. We have potentially four mana. Let's just take the draw in the regular spirit. Then our flyers can go in for four damage. Don't mind if I do, Hugh. Don't mind if I do. Are you going to buy this house? Oh, uh, shout out to anyone who knew what that was. Oh, that's good. That's really good. I'm glad Giant doesn't have Devotion. Double draw. I think it's worth it just to take it. All the Flyers can swing in. Pretty tempted to swing in with these slow struck beasts as well, if I'm being totally honest. They're forced to block, right? Because that's 15, like, yeah. That's some damage. We attack with everybody because they're forced to block these. We do, don't we? Math is for blockers. I know they've got Death Touch and First Strike, but we're going so far around them. Right? Yeah, that's lethal. But by it having to block the giant, it allows us to go around with everybody else, and then it can't block the other things, right? All right, our opponent goes first, but look at the opening hand we've got here. This is, like, pretty good. Oh, we don't have a- oh, we do. We do. We do. I knew that the whole time. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, HGG's not paying much attention today. Rogues. That's lovely. We can't wait to play the rest of this game out.
We have no one drop on top of it. I'm sure this just gets countered. It's too much land. I tell you, it's too much land. Then we can Vega Beast for the draw. I hope. I wouldn't mind some borrowers. Borrowers are great for flash blocking rogues. The mill is so overbearing though. It's not enough. Brutal. And the top deck land. That is just great. <laughs> That's lovely. Oh, into the story. Can't wait for that card to get rotated out. I'm gonna laugh for hours on rotation day. All the rogue players. For hours. All right. Be distracted for a bit because I hate rogues. Uh, hey, that's not bad. Need some more creatures on top of it, though. This is game. Like, what am I even? Land can go in. Sure. No attacks. Eliminate kills our spirit. That just feels lovely. Blurs in play. They don't even have anything in the grave, so they'll just have to cycle their wind robber on me. Oh, this is as good as the games there ever could be. Rogue player, rogue player, rogue player. I love you. Hey, they're fully tapped. We're gonna be milled out here, though. Kinda how those things go, right? Cry! What do you do? Oski off the top. And even then, now we're attacking to Death Touch. Great. 11 cards left. <laughs> Nine cards left. Good game, Mr. Rogue player. Or misses. 
definitely misses. All right, we go first here. Again, the hand does not look good enough to keep. The Sentinel is there, great, but this is better. Okay, cool. Well, kind of. We pull planes off the top. Probably not. Let's just play it safe. Take a white source here, right? We expose ourselves. Oh no. Charger. Well, the innkeeper's fine, I guess. It's still in a really good spot here. Probably just let the charger go through. Hopefully they brick, don't have a two drop. Or if they do, it has haste. I just don't want to hit that giant. Yeah, okay. Gross. Gross. They should attack, but... It's a good blocker, and we get the draw here. Gas. Champion, ultra annoying. They could still cleave here. They might giant first though. We're gonna get cleaved, we're gonna get cleaved anyways, right? There's no beating that. Why wouldn't they cleave Annex? They should have still cleaved Annex. I mean... These are the people we're getting beat by today. <laughs> oh no. Take a double draw. It's the only way we'll get ahead. In our turn. And now that the cleaves, like, it, it needs to be changed to Annex now, which is why they should have put it on Annex before, taken more damage, and then not had to pay mana to change it, but... I'll just get beat by them instead. <laughs> Alright, I'll just get beat by them instead.
And then when they attack, we can just bounce the cleave and kill an annex, I guess. What? Okay, so we fucked that up. They get the two satyrs, which is ultra annoying. Need more mana. <laughs> I guess, screw it. Well. We should have done that first. Okay. We should probably just hold up the bounce again, right? So let's get that token in. End our turn. Fourteen life. We can just stack Love Struck Beasts. Everything should be okay, right? More land. Actually, relatively good news for us. Giants are fine. I feel fairly good about this. They're gonna cleave to kill the Vega. We just bounced the cleave. Charger's gone, so there's no free cleave equip. They have one giant. And a charger, which is annoying. Love struck for the draw off Vega. Planes in play. Same with that one one just for the certified draw because they'll block Toski. Could block Toski with the charger, kill the one one. We'd still get the draw though. They let us take it, they don't block with the giant. Huh. So we'll double draw off the borrower here. They could Ambrith too. We are definitely in trouble. It is what it is. I 
Hey, now that's a good draw. We'll just block with everything, I think. Take the two damage from the charger. Or they might play the other giant. I don't care about the innkeeper. You know, we've got another, we've got Toski. There's plenty of draw. Vega also has a replacement. I do care about those love struck beasts more than anything. Big draw, big damage. Poor mono red deck. They didn't have the juice. They didn't have the juice. We did. I'm pretty impressed that we were able to deal with the cleave, right? Just kind of bounce it around here and there. Giant in play, sure. No haste. Land, cleave goes on. Let's take our double draw. One from Toss, or uh, Vega, sorry. And the other from the innkeeper. Here we win the game. It's lethal, even without this, but why not, right? a ton of damage and that's gonna be like a massive draw one two three four five six seven eight draws from toski there <laughs> i like that our opponent plays first oh man this hand looks a little slow forced off the top negative Oof. That fiddle has been wrecking me recently. I'm not a fan. You leave me alone, Mr. Beetle. I really want that giant killer, though. Right, we gotta kill that beast. So annoying. Frickin' beetle. You think we've got time to get Pega out? No. That freaking beetle, man.
they play a land, we have to bounce the beast. I hate that. So much. We save the spirit, doing the same thing we were going to, to protect from the hedge. Just for the double draw, plus the spirit. Apparition's good. Alright, we're assembling the forces! Spider. It's in our library. Triple draw, plus a spirit. Plus we got our retreat. Okay, we're in business now. No attacks. Once we get our retreat in, we can vigilance at plus one counters on everything. It's going to be good. This is going to be great. Please and thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Woo! Holy moly, we were going to get up to some trouble there. The Felidar's Retreat just turns this deck right on. All of a sudden, we got three threes with Vigilance. Oh my gosh. I love it. Alrighty, so the deck performs really, 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 really well. I want something with life gain. I know we only have the Spear, and it might be the right answer, right? To put the Spear on the Lovestruck Beast. Maybe even on the Brazen Borrower or Koski, and then at least you're gaining two life every turn. And he's got Trample, so they can't chump block with a token. I think the Spear, the Shadow Spear, has a potential place within the deck. What do you guys think? Let me know, uh, yay or nay, on Shadow Spear within the build in the comments below. Thank you all again for your time and attention. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, check out our link tree, blah, 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 blah. Watch a million more videos, and most importantly, have an amazing day. We'll see you soon.